welcome to my craft room. I'm excited to bring you a whole bunch of hero arts today. For one, I have a card, it's an acetate card, and I made it with these cute little bears. And these are from the Little Hoot set that's brand new from Hero Arts, fundraiser stamp set for Operation Right Home. And I'm gonna show you two ways to color the bear, as well as a whole tutorial on how to make the acetate card. And then I have some footage from Hero Arts itself, so stay tuned to the end of the video to watch that. This video is one in a series of tutorial videos on coloring the three animals in the Little Hoot set. I designed these specifically to be really great for people who are brand new to Copics. You can color all three images and do just great with only an investment of nine markers. So if you ever wanted to try Copics, this is a great time to do it with a great stamp set. These are the supplies that I'm using for the card and I'm gonna go through them one by one as I use them, but I wanted to show you all the stuff that it takes to make a card. Is it just me or do you have to get out half your craft room just to make one card? The background stamp on this is a Hero Art stamp. It's called Designer's Wood Grain, and I'm inking it up with Soft Sand Shadow Ink. I really love the shadow inks. They go on looking sometimes kind of blotchy, but they dry so nicely, and they dry softer than they go on. So I'm placing the craft paper, which is also from Hero Arts, on the stamp, and of course I've got my, my messy used <laughs> paper, my scratch paper to put on top to rub on so I don't get my fingers all inky. Now I'm gonna punch a hole one and three quarters inches. You would punch it whatever size you want your sentiment to be on a card like this. And now I'm using my Fisker's cutting mat with the little grid lines to line this thing up. The white paper is gonna go on the inside of the card and this brown is gonna go on the front of the card. So I want the hole to line up with the sentiment. So I'm taping them down to be able to do that. I'm inking it up with Memento ink and I'm going to put the sentiment right in there and pardon my big fat head. <laughs> Stamp that right inside the hole. So those are gonna line up perfectly when I get them inside the card. Now adhering to acetate is always a challenge because you're gonna see the adhesive on the outside. So I'm gonna glue this to the inside in two spots where I'm gonna be putting something on the outside that's gonna cover that. So you're not gonna see that adhesive. And then the inside portion gets adhered to the back of the, the acetate card base. Now I can set that aside so we can do some coloring. I'm only speeding up this first section because I am just coloring a base coat of the lightest color on the image. I'm using E33 and I'm just putting it in there. I'm not worrying about streak lines or anything. I just want to get the paper wet. And it is at double speed just because it's so simple. Now we're going to slow down to normal coloring speed so I can show you how to do the rest. When you do your shading on this, you want to put your darkest colors, and I'm going to my darkest marker first here, the E29. You want to put it behind anything that you want to recede. So if you want those ears to pop in front and the head to pop in front, put your shading around and underneath of that. Usually underneath is, is kind of a common place shadows appear, but you want to put it around the sides as well because that will make that head look like it's popping forward in the the little piece of art. The little baby bear is only going to get a teeny tiny bit of the E29 because most of his shadows are going to be done with the medium color because if the baby bear is light he's going to look like he's forward in the image like he's lighter than the mama bear and he's standing in front of her and that's going to give you a lot of that depth. Next I'm going to use the E37 and I'm only worried about blending the E29, the dark color, and the E37. Don't worry about what it looks like as that E37 gets into the E33 area that you've already colored because we're going to deal with that in a few minutes. So I'm just blending the dark into the medium section right now. That's all I'm worried about. A lot of people start panicking and they try to stretch out that medium color and they start filling in the whole image and then they've lost all their light areas. So make sure you don't go too far. Just use a little bit of it to blend that dark into kind of a medium area. And then if there's areas that you want to extend some shadows, I want to put more around the bottom underneath of the mama's snout. I can do that with the E33. And now the baby bear, the primal, primoral, the primary, I can't even talk, the primary color for his shading is going to be the medium tone so that he doesn't get too dark. 
And I'm gonna put a little bit of a medium tone around mama's eyes. If you, if you can be careful, do that. If not, then don't put anything above her eyes because she can look really mean pretty quickly. So you don't wanna to put too much up there or it's gonna look like she's frowning at her little baby bear. Now we're gonna go back to the lightest color. And this is the E33 in this particular case. I put a little bit of that dark color on her snout because I wanted a little bit of rounding there. You can skip that part entirely and just leave the snout without any shading, perfectly fine. But now I'm doing the same thing with this light color that I had done with the medium. I'm coloring over top of the areas I already had and flicking. So I'm, I'm putting the marker down basically on its side. You want to use the most of the side of the marker as you can when you're doing this because you're going to get more even strokes that way. And then flicking and lifting up the marker so you get that flicking motion. You want as little coating you know, multiple coating going over and over and over on those light areas as possible. Because if you keep coloring on top and on top and on top, trying to blend it too much, you're going to end up with the whole thing looking like one shade of brown. So if you end up with things looking like they don't have any depth, they don't have any darks and lights, then try not going over the light areas as many times. And that should help quite a bit. So our bear is almost done. We have one final touch to put on, which is on the eyes. I always like to take a little light blue, either a B00 or B000, and do just a little C shape on the bottom of the eyes that gives them a little depth. Now we're gonna start on the black bear. And the snout is gonna be E33, so I'm just gonna color that so I don't forget and start coloring it with my gray markers. And then I'm gonna take my C3 marker and cover the entire thing again, just like I did with the other image. And if you haven't noticed, I'm going to be fussy cutting this image, so I'm not worried about coloring outside the lines. I don't normally color so crazy. But when you're going to fussy cut an image as simple as this, it's really fast if you just don't have to worry about staying in the lines. The C7 is going to act as our darkest color here. If you're not sticking with my nine marker recommended set for coloring little hoots, you can certainly go with darker colors to make this a really darker black bear, then he'll, he'll end up looking like a dark gray black bear. But I think he still looks cute with these. The reason that I went with these colors is because these will also work well with the elephant. And I wanted to make something that wasn't going to make the elephant too dark. So coloring this one as a black bear is a little bonus treat that you have if you invest in this little set of markers. I'm blending out the medium tones the same way as I did on the previous image. And the little bear starts getting his dimension added with the C5, the medium tone marker. And the same, same thing that I did before, putting the C5 right along where all of the C7 is, blends that dark color right into the, the medium color. And now my C3, I go back in one more time with everything and smooth that out see how well that works with these markers. It, it works with all of them. Any kind of set that you have that you have three markers of, go for it. You can do this also with two. It's just a little more challenging, that's all. Now you can see some texture in these images. I'm coloring on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and sometimes you'll get a little texture. You get it with other papers too, but I also want to smooth that out. I can do that with a quick flick of the marker. Look how nice that that real quick motion just once over if i go over and over and over i'm going to start losing my dimension but going over it just once works just great now i'm going to add my little bears to my cards using power tabs these are from tombow and they are so super sticky and i love them i love using these they stick really well to this acrylic card this acetate card and so the little bear is covering up that place where i put the adhesive before now I'm gonna punch out a little tiny heart with my very old EK Success heart punch. I love this little thing. And adhere that also with a quarter of a power tab. And there is my finished card. How cute is that? Here it is in all its glory with the black bear and then with the brown bear. They're just so cute. I really love how these cards came out and I think somebody's going to really love sending these little cards home to their kiddos. And now that the card is over, let me take you on a tour of Hero Arts.
looking for the Operation Red Home sets. And look at this, I found them here. They're on the show. Yay. Love these. Thank you so much for joining me for the short tour. There's a full tour going on right over here. It's a 20 minute tour of the Hero Arts finishing facility with Aaron, the CEO of Hero Arts himself, giving you the entire layout of the place and how they do everything they do. And you can watch that, but before you go, please do me a favor, it's Thanksgiving next week. Tell me in the doobly-doo, what is your favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving? Mine, it's gotta be stuffing, hands down. I could eat stuffing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner when it's my mom's stuffing. So, mom, get busy cooking. I'm coming home for some stuffing. <laughs>